Hey everyone, it's Asa, and welcome to my video on basic unit data fundamentals. There are a lot of specific filters and details you can use when looking at data. However, I would say for 99% of cases, you can actually just go to tactics.tools, stats, units, and just look at the adjusted placement, and that will generally give you the best in slot for each unit, and I'll kind of talk through about how to read it. So let's just look at Zaya, for example. Um, adjusted placement, if you mouse over it, it'll tell you a little bit about how it calculates it. It's not super detailed, um, but basically it's just the developer of the site. Um, again, solo developer, really, really talented guy. Uh, I trust the way he does data a lot, uh, but if you sort by this, you'll basically get the best performing items on Zaya on this patch. Um, so you can see there's a, about a million games. So if anything has a 1% play rate, that's only a thousand games, which is pretty low sample size, but things for like 10% play rate is like 10,000 games. So 10,000 games is pretty safe. Uh, but yeah, basically the higher the play rate, the better. I would say like 10% at this main games is pretty safe. Um, yeah, uh, just going by adjusted placement, I mostly want to focus on the craftable items. However, there are some artifacts and radiant items up here, of course, that are good. That are good. But generally focusing on the craftables, from top to bottom, they're generally going to be the best items. Uh, so you can see Giant Slayer, Lasso Sword, Guardbreaker, Gunblade, Deathblade, Infinity Edge, Shoujin, Rageblade. Um, pretty much when you get around here, these items are kind of mid, and you kind of want to... You can use them if you need to, you don't have the components for other things. But you would much rather have one of these one, two, three, four, five, six, like top seven items. Uh, but if you have to use one of these, it's okay if you, or even like Quicksilver or Hurricane down here, if you can't get anything else. Uh, this is just generally going to be very safe. But another thing you should keep in mind is the play rate. So you can see Infinity Edge is down here. Um, I think it's also good to just sort by play rate as well and look at these. So normally the top play rate item is actually the best item, but you can see that it performs kind of lowly, low in adjustment placement. The reason is players are over prioritizing it. So this is Diamond Plus data. Um, I'm just curious if Challenger or GM Plus shows something different. Uh, I would expect Infinity Edge to be better. Yeah, there's just a, kind of too low sample size for all of these, like 63,000 games, 1% is only like 600 games. Uh, yeah, so it's not enough sample. Uh, so I, I would recommend just using Diamond Plus. But basically, the reason Infinity Edge is this, is this low, even though it is Zaya's best damage item, is because players are over-prioritizing it. You can see a lot of the items up here, such as Giant Slayer. Um, basically, a lot of the items, it uses a sword and a glove, but you could instead use that sword and a glove to make Giant Slayer, glove to make Last Whisper, glove to make Guardbreaker, sword to make Gunblade, sword to make Deathblade. So you notice every single item above Infinity Edge uses either a sword or a glove. So the reason Infinity Edge is this low is because the play rate is so high that a lot of players at the Diamond level might not really know what other items to build. Uh, so they will not build an item like Last Whisper or Deathblade, for example, in order to save those components for Infinity Edge. That causes the placement to go down because first of all, they're not building an item that's, they're delaying their power. So they might lose maybe, you know, like 20 HP because of that. That's 20 HP is easily a placement diff uh, in a vacuum. Um, they might be giving up a carousel priority. For example, they might be in a spot where they have Sword Sword and instead of making Deathblade and then getting something like Anti-Heal off the carousel, They'll take a glove and make Infinity Edge. Uh, so generally, always look at play rate as well. The top play rate items are uh, generally just going to be really good. But other than that, sort by adjustment placement will give you a good indicator of the best items on each unit. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is you can also sort by average placement. This is a little trickier because you get these really low play rate items like Bloodthirster Zaya. Bloodthirster is basically only put on Zaya if you already have other really strong carries, for example, like if you're playing seven anima squad, you're just not going to have a Bloodthirst on your Zaya. However, if you're playing 
maybe like six golden ox and you have a fully decked out Aphelios, a fully decked out Viego, fully decked out Annie, and then you're just farming item components later in the game, you might get a bloodthirst or you might have no one to throw it on, so you throw it on your side. So that's why you can see some of these items performing really well up here. Uh, like Static Shiv, same kind of concept, Nasher's Tooth. You're generally not putting these items on your Zaya. Uh, but you can see even like, yeah, even some strange items are outperforming some real items. Mm. Like, okay, again, like Bloodthirster is probably the most glaring example. Uh, Edge of Night. Um, this is also from Not Today Augment, which is actually fine. Uh, Quicksilver and Hurricane. Like, these are fine, but generally these low play rate items that you're not usually putting on your primary carry, carry will have better average placement because of those situations, uh, like the six golden ox one I uh, gave as an example. Again, if we look at other units, um, oops, what is going on here? Uh, let's just look at like Brand, for example. We know his best items are Jewel Gauntlet, Shoujin, and Guard Breaker, but if we sort by adjusted placement, you can see a lot of these items are at the top, but you can also see are there really, really, really strong brand, brand items like Adaptive, Nashers, um, Death Cap, Giant Slayer? Uh, all of these are going to be pretty good on brand Morello. Um, all of these items are going to be pretty good on brand. And again, players may be kind of tanking the average placement by not building these often enough. But if you, again, if you sort by play rate, these at the top are typically going to be the best items, but if you sort by justice placement, you're going to get you're going to get like passable items that you probably should be building if you're not already building them. Again, it is situational. For example, if I start the game with Street Demon Emblem, I know I'm playing brand for sure. And I have cloak chain vest. Or sorry. Tier cloak. Uh but I'm lost streaking. I might not make the adaptive helm because if I'm lost streaking anyway, I don't need to make an item. I might greed for Shoujin, 60% play rate. Even though it has a slightly worse adjusted placement by 0.01, it is a better item if you look at play rate. So generally look at these. Once again, avoid using regular placement because you'll just get these really low play rate items like Quicksilver and Adjustice. You can kind of mentally filter these out, of course. But once again, the only situation where you might end up with a hand Adjustice on a brand, you're probably going to place really well because it's kind of implying that you have a lot of other things going on for your board and brand is not your primary carry. So again, there are a lot of detailed filters you can use. I've made a lot of content throughout the sets uh, on data. Um, it will probably be looking at old sets, so I'll probably do another video on more advanced data stuff this for set 14. But just for basic data and what items are good on, adjust this placement in Tactics.tools is a great place to go. That's going to wrap it up for this video, and thanks for watching.